Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Exploring Elements. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time in the Photoshop Elements Editor in quick edit mode and talk about some simple photo editing techniques. I've got a photo of my daughter Alyssa and my granddaughter Audrey opened up in the quick edit mode of Photoshop Elements. What I want to do first is talk about all of this stuff over on the right hand side. These are some of the adjustments that you can very easily make to your photos in Photoshop Elements. Now I'm going to skip over Smart Fix. I don't want to do it the automatic way, but I still want to do it the easy way. So that's why I'm going to use the rest of these adjustment sections. Let's go ahead and open up the Exposure section. And the way we do that is just clicking on it. Now in each of these sections we're going to get these thumbnails that show us different amounts of that particular adjustment. So this is Exposure, which is sort of the, the how bright your photo is. That was my original shot. And I can hover my mouse. Let me highlight that for you. I can hover my mouse over any of these thumbnails and that amount of exposure adjustment gets applied to my photo. And I can hover around till I see one I like and just go ahead and click on it. For this photo, I want to brighten it up just a little bit. You know, that's extreme, of course. I'll probably never pick that one. This one's maybe even a little too bright, but it's a little brighter than that. If I want in between two of these thumbnails, well, that's what this slider right here is for. I can actually click on that slider, this one right here, and just slide it back and forth. And instead of having to pick from one of the nine thumbnails, I can get any amount of exposure that I want. If I'm at zero, well, that's what my original photo looks like. But if I bring it up just a little bit, I'm changing the exposure of this photo to just brighten things up a touch. So, you know, every photo is going to be different. For this one, maybe about 1.5, 1.6 is really all the exposure adjustment that I want. Don't want to go too much more than that. All right, so now that we're done adjusting exposure, we can click on exposure and close that section. Now we can move down to the lighting section. Now you might think that lighting and exposure are pretty much the same thing, but they're actually a little bit different. In the lighting section, we can control the shadows, or the midtones, or the highlights of our photo. And so maybe the shadows are a little too dark. I can click on shadows. It works exactly the same as that exposure section worked, where I can hover my mouse over any of these thumbnails and see different amounts of adjustment to just the shadowy portions of a photo. Now this photo actually doesn't need much adjustment in the shadows, but I want a little bit. So I'm gonna, again, grab that slider, and just bring it up a touch. Maybe not all the way even to that first thumbnail, but maybe 10, 11, who knows. It's really up to your own personal preferences and the characteristics of the photo that you're adjusting. So try shadows, try the slider, and see what looks good for you. Midtones are sort of not the shadows, not the highlights, but those areas in between the two. Now the midtones of this photo uh, are actually pretty good to start with, so I don't want to do any adjustment, but I'm going to hover my mouse around and kind of show you what the differences are. So there's my original photo. There's the midtones brightened up just a little bit, but I actually don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave this one alone. And then I'm going to move on to highlights. So highlights are the bright spots in your photo. I can darken the highlights a lot or just a little. And in this photo, again, the highlights aren't too bad, but I want to darken them, kind of bring them down just a notch. It's kind of up to you again how much you want, how much you don't want, um, but slide the sliders around to get it looking as you want. Now one of the things that I actually often do uh, from an automatic perspective is this button right here in the lighting section called Auto Levels. It's going to analyze my photo and make all three of these adjustments for me automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that and let Photoshop Elements do the work of figuring out how to adjust the shadows, how to adjust the midtones, and how to adjust the highlights. And then Auto Contrast is also something that I'll use often. Just click Auto Contrast, and it'll again analyze your photo and make some contrast adjustments to get the lighting looking really good. All right, so that's exposure and lighting. Now what I want to do is tweak the color a little bit. 
So I'm going to open up the color section and kind of like lighting, um, there's three different types of color adjustments we can make. Uh, there's saturation, which is really how much color is in my photo. And again, we've got the nine thumbnails. This is my original. If I hover over these thumbnails up above my original, I'm actually removing color from the photo. And if I remove all the color, well, I've got a black and white photo. And just the opposite, if I hover down below my original, I'm pushing more color into the photo. And of course, if I go to an extreme, you know, that's probably not what I want to do with this photo, but you start to get the idea of what this saturation adjustment takes care of. And so I want to actually just boost the saturation. Maybe one of these thumbnails actually looks pretty good. So I'll just hover my mouse over this first thumbnail and go ahead and click it. And by clicking that thumbnail, those adjustments stick onto my photo. Again, the slider is here, so I could use the slider as well if I wanted to do that. But with this photo, maybe one thumbnail up is about what I want. The next section of color is something called hue. And that's right here in the color section. You can go ahead and click on that. Um, I don't actually use hue very often, but if you wanted to do something wacky like uh, turn your family into the Smurfs, um, you can change the hue of a photo to do something like that. But hue is really just sort of a very strong color adjustment kind of thing, color replacement kind of thing, um, that you probably won't use very often. What you might do is actually start with the original and come in with the slider and adjust just a little bit, but you know, it sort of depends whether you're looking for a nicely exposed and color adjusted photo or something wacky. I want something nice, so I'm just going to go ahead and re-click that center thumbnail right here to reset it back to the original hue settings when I captured the photo. The next one is Vibrance. Now, Vibrance is something um, I use a lot. I kind of think of Vibrance as a saturation adjustment, but it doesn't really affect skin tones. So as I hover over these different thumbnails, you can see the color's getting adjusted, the skin is getting adjusted a little bit, but not as much as if I was using that saturation control. It's actually much more stronger. Notice the uh, purple shirt on Andre here. The purple is actually popping much more and changing much more as I pick different vibrant settings uh, than the skin tones are. So I'll come in often and just maybe pump the color up a little bit by sliding the vibrance slider up. With most of these adjustments, uh, less is more. You don't want to overdo any of this stuff because then the photo starts to look unnatural. But I'm going to give it just a little bit of extra vibrance. Down in the balance section, the next one, is where we can adjust either temperature or tint. And temperature may be a term that you're not really used to in thinking about your photographs, but think of temperature as hot and cold. And that's exactly what this control does. So if I hover over the extreme thumbnail, things turn blue, that's cold. Hover over the extreme thumbnail on the other end of the spectrum, well, things are turning orange and red, and that's hot. And of course, we can go anywhere in between. Uh, we can click on any of these thumbnails to sort of lock in that amount of setting, either just a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer. I actually prefer a little bit cooler over the original in this photo. Well, maybe the original. Again, it's sort of up to you. I think I want to go between the two. So again, that's where this slider comes in, and I can fine-tune the coolness or the warmness of this photo by sliding that uh, temperature slider. Tint is kind of like hue. I very rarely use the tint control, but it's sort of pushing in pinks and greens and making that kind of adjustment to your photo if you want. For this one, I actually like the tint that's in my original photo, so I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, and then finally, sharpening. So this last section, the sharpen section, uh, is pretty cool. Again, you don't want to go to the extreme. If I go all the way to this thumbnail, uh, that's sort of too much sharpening. And the best way to make sure that you have the right amount of sharpening is to zoom in all the way on your photo. Over here on the left, we have a magnifying glass. That's the zoom tool. If I double click the magnifying glass, 
Photoshop Elements will zoom all the way into my photo. And now when I come over here and hover over these thumbnails, I get a really good feel for how much sharpening is happening in any particular amount of the sharpening adjustment. If I go all the way, that's not really the look I'm after. Their skin is really starting to look, uh, you know, bad, not so good. For this photo, I want just a little bit of sharpening. So I'm going to click on that very first thumbnail. Back over here on the left, the magnifying glass is our zoom tool. Right below that is what we call our hand tool. And a trick to know is that if I double click on the hand tool, it's going to zoom out so I can see all of my photo. So I don't need to use the zoom tool and kind of go out, 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 out until all my photos showing with double clicks on either the hand tool or a double click on the magnifying glass. I can zoom very quickly all the way in and all the way back out. Okay, so I've pretty much gone through all of the things over here on the right hand side in the adjustments panel of the quick edit mode of Photoshop Elements. Now what I want to do is explore just a couple of these tools over here on the left. We've already talked about the zoom tool and the hand tool, uh, so I'm not going to talk about those much anymore. Uh, this is the quick selection tool. For this Exploring Elements session, I'm actually going to skip over the quick selection tool. The next one is the eye tool. Now, their eyes happen to be closed in this shot, um, but sometimes you may notice you get red eye, and that's the tool you would use to fix red eye. The next tool is our whiten teeth tool. Um, neither of them are smiling in a way that shows their teeth. Uh, but if they were, you could use the uh, whiten teeth tool and just brush over their teeth and get them to be a little bit whiter. Uh, next one down is the straighten tool. Uh, if you needed to adjust the angle of a photo, maybe the horizon isn't flat, uh, you would use the straighten tool. If you wanted to embellish your photo with some text, well, that's what the type tool is. Uh, the spot healing brush tool is actually the one that I use a lot. This is maybe my favorite tool uh, inside the quick edit mode of Photoshop Elements. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the spot healing tool. And the way this works is I just come over to my photo. You can see that little round circle is where the tool is and hover over an imperfection in my photo. All of these little freckles on Alyssa's face, maybe we don't want that many. So if I just click on a freckle, it disappears. Let me zoom all the way in. Again, a double click on the zoom tool and I zoom all the way in. I can use my hand tool to pan around to different parts of my photo. Back to my spot healing brush and just a click. And I can get rid of a lot of these freckles on Alyssa's face. So I'll click around a little bit. I'm not going to get rid of all of them because, you know, she does have freckles and I want the photo to kind of look natural. But we've gotten rid of a few of them. And actually, maybe now that I'm zoomed out, I want to get rid of some of these bigger ones too. Something like that. Maybe even a few of them on her neck. Something like that. There we go. So that's a really great tool for cleaning up skin blemishes. Freckles, pimples, those kind of things. Even wrinkles, it works on pretty good. And then the final tool I want to talk about is the crop tool. Cropping your photo is really important. So this tool right here is our crop tool. Go ahead and click on the crop tool. And one of the things that you're going to notice in Photoshop Elements is down here along the bottom in the tool options for the crop tool, we have something that we call crop suggestions. And this is a really powerful feature in Photoshop Elements where the software will look at a photo It'll analyze it for lots of different characteristics. It'll look for faces, it'll look for eyes, it'll look for smiles, it'll look for objects in the background. And then it'll use a bunch of artificial intelligence to figure out what the best crop could be for your photo. And you can hover over any of these crop suggestions and see in the main part of your screen what it is suggesting. And there's a whole bunch of composition rules that it knows about. And so usually one of these suggested crops are actually pretty good. But before I pick one of them, I want to talk some about this little pull down right here. So it starts off with use photo ratio. So what does that mean? Well, that means these suggested crops, the aspect ratio, the height and the width, matches what the original photo is. But you actually don't always want to do that. 
Sometimes you're going to be printing a photo to put in something like a photo frame. So maybe you want to put it in a 5x7 photo frame. You can click on this pull down, pick 5x7, and all of a sudden these crop suggestions change so that they're going to be something that looks good and fits in a 5x7 frame. Or if instead of 5x7, maybe I'm printing to put in a 4x6 frame. Well, I'll just pick 4x6 and then we're good to go. So I'm going to hover over a couple of these, find one that's pretty much what I want, and I think maybe I'll pick this one. And the crop suggestions are a great way to get started, but if I move my mouse up here, I can actually move this crop area around, starting with what the crop suggestion had. And sometimes you might want to do that um, just to fine-tune things to get them to match your personal taste. Once I've got it as I like it, I just click this little green check mark and Photoshop Elements will go ahead and crop that photo for me. So now the last thing I want to show off here in quick edit mode is this view pull down. So it's in after only, so I get to see all of the edits that I've made to my photo. If I change that to before only, I get to see the photo before I even started. Or if I go to before and after, I can see what the photo looks like when we started and what it looks like after we've done some editing. Again, if I come back and double click on my hand tool, we can fit our photos back to the screen so we can see all of them. And so you can see back to the original photo where we started a few minutes ago. I actually thought it was a really good photo, but I've done some adjustments to make it look a little better. I've brightened it up quite a bit so I can see their faces better. I've cropped it so it's going to fit in a, uh, I think I picked 4 by 6 if I remember correctly. I've adjusted the lighting, the shadows, the highlights, those kind of things. I've tweaked the color a little bit um, to boost the saturation so we have a little bit more color in our photo. And I adjusted the balance and the sharpening to just get it to look a little bit nicer. So there's your quick tour exploring the Elements Quick Edit Mode and some of the simple edits that you can do right here to your photos to make them look great. Take care, and we'll see you next time.